among the people who are infected by the Naxalite virus. They really hate them. And therefore, interaction with the politician, which normal, is normal course, happens in other areas, does not happen in these affected areas. So here is a challenge to the people that you are again, you have become the sole interface between the, the gover government and the government. And you have to play a role that spans many things from that role of the intermediary, role of interpreter, providing justice, ensuring hospitals are built, schools are constructed, and roads are made ready in the face of a lot of challenges. Because Nafsai don't want development to come. They don't want development because once development comes, they, they cannot succeed. But therefore, the challenge is to fight them with development. And this mantra has to be instilled. Things are not, and most of the time, issues are not lower or issues. Issues are have to be handled sensitively and in a very sophisticated manner. And this is the real challenge. And this is the how the face of the bureaucracy must change. <coughs> Yes, corruption will be there. I am not a great optimist that things will improve value immediately. Let me realize it. And there are many depressing things that are happening in the country. But as I said, lovely hai ram ki sham. Thank you.
to be changed in political diversity. In some other countries like America, they change. But in our system, inherited from the British, civil servants are valued. As they have to be about politics, they have nothing to do with the political thinking and all that of the ruling party. But whatever policy is there, they have to implement. Whichever party is there and whatever their policy, they have to implement it without any bias. A doctor, he will treat all patients, whether he is a politician or a BJP man or a communist. For him, all are patients. He will treat. Civil services, whether it is a bank or they treat everybody as equal. Unfortunately, there is a feeling, there is a thinking, right or wrong, that even in delivering their services, somehow the political and politicalization is there, whether it is even in bank notes or the case of that. That is at least a suspicion of the people. <coughs> now, civil services were quite <coughs> trustworthy earlier. We entered the services, I joined IAS in 1952, and India became a democratic republic in 50. So we have seen, people of our generation have seen the administration growing from 50. From the time India became a democratic republic <coughs> in 88 when I retired, we have seen the uh, growth of the civil service, the good times, the bad times, the all kinds of things. <coughs> in, our in our days, uh, when India became independent, it is the civil servants who fix the TV persons and uh, private property of 500 Rajas and Maharajas in less than two years. Somebody went down, officers went down, there are guidelines to care on what basis their private property is to be given to the person. And they are done not a thing about the it was what. Today you give a chair to somebody that will be questioned whether there is dishonesty in it. Several crores of these commitments were made by the civil servants. They went down and did it. No human body. That was trust. You see, that kind of thing is not there now. Now the task given to the civil servant was that food grain production is very low. India is dependent on import of food grains. We used to import lakhs and millions of tons of food grain from abroad. We, unless a ship comes from America, there was problem that there will be shortage of food grains. But in course of time, the civil servants give their energy, their concentration and work, and we are now able to produce that time production was 50 million tons. Population was hardly 360 million tons. Today the food production is 260 million tons from the population at 1200 million tons. Instead of importing food grains, we are exporting food grains. There is shortage of storage. Now this was done because of discernment action. And absolutely with honesty, with commitment, they said that we have to produce to agricultural scientists, the uh, other person connected to agriculture, they devoted time and energy and the country became self-sufficient for grains. Now, there was no steel production, hardly Tatas were producing steel. Then, Rudapu was started, Dilai was started, no more of steel then. Because steel production is essential for Turkish development. Now, these foundations were laid by them because the leaders were there. They were trusting people, the officers, whether it was Sardar Patel or Sardar Dehru, Rajendra Gupta, they trusted the civil servant and civil servant wrote the occasion and a lot of things were done. <coughs> Unfortunately, in course of time, this trust started declining. I will not blame the politicians only, the differences came on the civil servants also. Their earlier generations were absolute honesty. But in course of time, somehow corruption went in, uh, also was became a great business and corruption spread until that the civil servants also suffered. Of late, there is a lot of politicalization. It's not, not only the ministers, not only the top politicians, but even MPs and MLAs are able to sort of harass them. They are also able to get them transferred. They say something and they are transferred. Recently, in UP, this In UP, uh, mentioned the name of Kondashio, Durga Sakti Nakpa, and the collector of the district. Because the lady didn't allow the sand mining to be done, the sand mining. 
So she was the one political mafia was involved. So she was transferred. She was suspended. Action was taken. She, the collector also was transferred because he said that she is not uh, guilty. She is honest. The allegation they were uh, wall from a masjid, the wall was demolished, which was not correct. Now, this kind of thing, stories have fabricated, you don't like an officer harassing. Somehow, the civil services also have lost of public confidence. Because many of them, not all, but many of them have some kind of arrogance of power. Arrogance of power, they do not meet people, they come, people come to meet them. They must meet the people, hear them, and then they will get public confidence. That is not there. In our day, it was not so. As collector, I said there are no screens. There is no screens. I am not a Pardana Singh <coughs> Let people come and meet me freely. And we used to meet them. Now, that kind of thing is necessary. You must remain in touch with the people, hear their grievances, hear their complaints, and try to do as much as possible. That somehow will not be there. So, the civil services also are at fault. There is corruption. There is lack of uh, public contact. So that kind of thing as the politicians are taking advantage of this. Then another factor which is coming because of corruption, the CBI has become important. The influencer of corruption, CBI has given a lot of power. They can start case against anybody without consideration. Even if slight error, technical error, or maybe bona fide mistake, but they see that this corruption will start a case. When I was secretary personnel, I said, this is not desirable, this will not happen. Officers must lose confidence. Honest mistake anybody can make. Now, CBI cannot decide whether import of onion is proper at what price, whether sugar is to be exported at what price. How can CBI decide in the people inside who know what is the reason for taking that decision? So I suggested to government uh, that there must be legal provision. Earlier during Mr. Indra Gandhi's time, a directive was issued to the CBI not to start any case against decision making level officer. Decision making level officer, joint secretary, additional secretary, secretary, these higher level officers, where decisions are taken. They are called decision making level officers. CBI will not register any case against these officers without the prior uh, consultation of government, prior approval of government. Now that case went to the Supreme Court and Supreme Court held that since the police have the power to investigate, their power cannot be taken away, it has to be by statutory rules, not by a directive, not an executive order. That was earlier called <coughs> only directive issued to the CBI, not to the registered case. When the Supreme Court ruled that it has to be statutory provision, I suggested that let there be statutory provision. In the Vigilance Commission Act, the provision was made that CBI cannot register any case against decision-making level officer without prior consultation of government. Because government only will know why sugar has to be imported from, which country it has to be imported, what price it has number of considerations go in taking decision. CBI doesn't have that kind of knowledge or understanding, and they cannot just start a case that, well, there is suspicion. In the present whole allocation case that it has been happening, whole blocks were allotted. There are a lot of consideration as to which block is to be allotted to whom. Now, somebody raised objection that it has been done to show favoritism to some person. So and they started a case. The Prime Minister then had to display statement that no, it was done, it is entirely appropriate. We took into consideration various things and came to the conclusion that we now, unfortunately, decision making is also being questioned. The, you, you take it so long of decision to honest bona fide, you cannot just start a case. But this kind of things are happening with the other. The governance is becoming uh, sort of demoralized, what you call paralysis of policy making. Then decision making is getting delayed. All kinds of consultations are required before a decision is taken. I refer to various people, let each one see and see whether it is okay. Now, this is slowing down. There is too much of distrust, too much of uh, uh, sort of uh, doubt, and everybody, everybody is corrupt. There is no doubt corruption. A lot of corruption is there. 
but you cannot say that everybody is corrupt. Somehow, you, there will always be honest person. Some person just cannot be dishonest. Biologically, they are so great that they will not be dishonest. Come what may. Now, fortunately, we have a large number of persons who are honest. They, they will not uh, take, uh, they will not do anything dishonestly. They may make a mistake in the education, where is human, but it is not out of uh, any dishonest motive. So you have to also trust, public have also to trust, media also have to trust. Luckily, the media has been able to understand, and that's how in this form of allocation, they are giving favorable comments that you cannot just like that uh, blame the decision. Unfortunately, number of circumstances are combined to make the government slow moving. The suspicion, all round suspicion of corruption, that is corruption, but as I mentioned, there are also honest people and things are going on. So the climate has to improve. The role of civil servant is the same, that they have to serve the people, they are public servants. But we call them bureaucrats now. We don't call civil servants. A, 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 a word has been discovered, bureaucrats. Bureaucrats mean who doesn't work, or who works with a lot of visibility, who have no sympathy for anybody. So he is a bureaucrat. So these days, civil servants, they are civil servants, servants of the public, public servants. <coughs> so they are a kind of uh, uh, environment has been created which is uh, not conducive to good governance, not conducive to good administration. Of course, faults are there all round. I won't say that politicians are not at fault or civil servants are not at fault. But there is a general climate of uh, suspicion, distrust, criticism. The, the climate has to improve. And even values have to be there. And we must know that once you have elected persons, you must, must try to trust them, otherwise why do you vote for them? You vote for the proper, the good person, you exercise your right to vote properly. If you vote a criminal, the fault is yours. Why do you vote for criminals? You vote, see a person and vote. Luckily now they have interviewed that if you don't like any of the candidates, you say none of these. Now the citizen also have a duty. Citizen duty also is to see that there is good governance, good persons are elected and then trust them. Similarly, the civil service has recruitment in impartiality to public service commissions. They are training in there, a lot of people are paid even, and they do their business. There are, in the, you, you will find that some are not so good. It happens in any, any human organization. You will not find 100% of our good, some will also not be good. So they are trying to pick up those who are good and don't harass them. Don't give too much of power to the police to harass them, to start a case, file an FIR. Once you file an FIR, after some time you find no FIR is wrong, but in the meanwhile he has been humiliated. His social prestige is gone. This is, this is, oh, so this is what is happening. Our, some of our thinking is not towards how to make society good, how to make government good, how to make at least. It is a combined responsibility. This is a vigilance is price of liberty. But that vigilance has to be proper vigilance. That is not happening. Somehow indiscriminately we will blame people. So there is need that citizens should also be aware, citizens should also should exercise their various rights as well as properly, then things will improve. I'm sure the, the our country in, in that way it learns. It has a tendency to learn. The media is also now giving constructive criticism, and there is not uh, widely criticism. Things do improve, and uh, the public opinion has to be created. For this purpose, this kind of discussions are necessary. All kinds of viewpoints will come forward to hear from the civil servants' point of view, politicians' point of view, public points of view. But the primary duty of civil servants, somehow we enter service as I mentioned earlier. An opportunity to work with Pandit Nehru, Rajendra Prasad. Indira Gandhi, I worked on here for 10 years in pre education period. Now we have seen the function of these leaders. A very brave lady, when a decision has been taken, she decides swiftly. When Golden Temple, Vignanwala is creating all kinds of problems, she said, I'll remove him. 
already said if you remove, you will have to use tanks because the very legs are there, it is necessary to use tanks. But main temple do not disturb. Well, they should do that decision, no decision, risky decision. But there are no, no, because she was herself determined that she must do justice to the people, the Indians who are coming, and they are removed. Similarly, in the Bangladesh war, Murti Bahini was fighting, and uh, they wanted India Gandhi to help the, uh, to allow the Indian army to help. She decided to help, and the Bangladesh war won. The Bangladesh war created. Now, that kind of leadership, bona fide decisions, good decisions, and then uh, sort of uh, do uh, whatever you tell to the best of your ability. We have to support them, we have to trust them. Political leaders also are good. Political people, they are also criminals. But do not blame everybody. There are good people, there are bad people, right people. We have to see and then decide. Thank you very much. <laughs> changes that have come about over the decades and the, the what you call the peaceful assimilation process which is taking place and the the changes that have take, taken place in the external environment in the media, the you know, the media, the, the democratic institutions, etc. And also he he spoke of the need to reinforce the value system in in, well, in society but also in the democracy in self services. Dr. Agarwal, again, I think, uh, with his vast experience, 
and this intimate knowledge of her, of a period which is extremely relevant to understand because it, it, it underpins and it forms the basis of you know, the bureaucracy and the civil service and our whole polity and how it has changed over the years. So I think with these two uh, uh, presentations, I think it's, the tone has been really well set for uh, the subject for discussion. I, I'm afraid I don't have a like I would have a prepared speech as such, but I, uh, I have put back some points and I'll try to cover, uh, I'll be expected to cover from an insider's point of view, of course, the current environment, and we all know how it is. How the civil services is changing? Well, uh, Mr. Chandigarh already mentioned about how things have changed in the external environment, the 1973 uh, constitutional amendment brought about the change and uh, empowerment of panchayat raj institutions, sometimes civil service puts them, sometimes even now, empowerment of civil service puts them to come to terms with the redefining <coughs> equations, particularly at the, <coughs> at the district and the block level. Now, the when you think of the change in the role of the civil service, you know, think of change at the field level, at the implementation and the execution level, and also change at the policy level. The decision making, I think over the years, over the decades, have definitely become more complex. The issues are more complex, and we live in a more interdependent world. And I think this also adds to the complexity of times because decisions which and issues which were primarily uh, you know, confined to uh, the country as such now have international ramifications for them in terms of trade and in terms of economic policy. Now, so, so this is one factor which, which has affected and brought about a change in the way that bureaucracy and civil service works. <coughs> We tend to rely increasingly on experts and expertise from outside. We have a larger number of regulators and they with their own inputs. There's a lot of information feeds into the system. We tend to depend, even rightly so, increasingly on experts, whether legal experts or tax experts, tax experts or technical experts. Issues like, you know, we are short of fertilizer. We produce essentially urea or some complex fertilizer when it comes to phosphatic fertilizers, for instance. We, we, we want to look at assets abroad. We want to acquire assets abroad. Now, you want to acquire a $10 billion mine or any other asset. You want to acquire a coal mine or a, or a fertilizer asset. Now, how do you take the decision to invest $10 billion? I mean, it's not just a question of the, you know, the vigilance of the CBI peering down your back. Even if they didn't exist, how do you take arrive to decision? Now, it's, it's not an easy thing. It's not just a question of where is the money going to come from. But there are host of factors which have to be, you know, which come in. So this is just an example of how how decision making can become complex, and increasing complex. Now. What has happened is that uh, this has led to a greater focus and something which is impacting on the civil service also. Um, a greater focus on you know, uh, management rather than administration. My friend Prajapati keeps telling me that uh, modern governments are more systems driven and mission driven and not rules driven. And here by rules driven and issue. Qualify, it's not that, that we are Rajatta, I have rules, they not in that sense, but, but, but you know, they, they, they want results. And a good government is an anticipatory government. It will, it will try, to, try to see in advance what's happening, what's, what's hoping, what's going to happen, and be prepared for that. He's the management expert. He, he, he talks of differences between steering and rowing. 
I think I think we can I, I trust him after um, those discussions he, he can um, teach us more about why in, at the policy level in government you need to steer and not just to row. But but I leave the explanation which I'm going to give. So what are the changes? We have greater use of technology. I also already mentioned about the growth of regulatory bodies. We have this new animal called PPP. Now, uh, this is still an evolving uh, uh, arena because we have resorted to PPP, the public-private partnership models in, uh, in, in so many sectors. For instance, in roads, but roads is just one of them. And uh, there are a lot of pluses in this. There are minuses too, because again, uh, a lot of issues come up which uh, call for decisions. And decisions which are not easy to arrive at, decisions which cannot comfortably be taken by, by civil servants. So we, it goes up, and it goes up to, uh, to, to the government. And again, in government it's not easy. So you set a committee of ministers to do it. Sometimes there's a comment that there's an increasing resort to groups of ministers and groups of committees, but I think it's necessary because there's a lot of uh, interdependence among ministries and interdependence of issues. And it is just as best that we work in a collaborative manner, not just at the level of civil servants, but even at the ministerial level, and try to get the best uh, decision that is possible. So, so these issues have changed. The, the but at the same time, some things have not changed. And the most recent example, which I think underscored this, was uh, what happened in Muzaffarnagar. The good old administration of the district manager, reading the signals, seeing what is brewing, and if there is trouble of a communal nature, things of this sort coming, then coming down with a heavy hand immediately. These uh, requirements have not changed. And I don't think they will change. So, uh, or when you talk of left-wing extremism affected districts of states, the need for, again, the time testing, police can beat just because they know the fact that, you know, they are new, they don't have adequate intelligence on the ground, or what they should have been, no, they trap some police party, or something else. So, so that system, you might rely on technology to get that gather information. So, but the old standard, time honored principles and systems, I think, cannot change. Yes, but there are new developments. People say that you look at C3 prism or C5 prism, I don't know, CDI and CAG and CDC and the courts and CIC. Excuse so me, a little louder. A little louder? Okay. <laughs> I'll try and amplify my remarks to them metaphorically. Uh, so, uh, so this uh, influences, this colors the, uh, you know, affects the decision making. People say that because of RTI, you know, decision making has become. Uh, people say it's become slow, people are more careful. I'm sure they are. And, and I, I suppose that was one of the objectives of uh, the uh, Freedom of Information Act when it was uh, you know, enunciated in the United Kingdom, the Right to Information Act, when we enacted it. That uh, you, know, you are uh, on watch, you are under scrutiny, and you are not on your own entirely. And so be careful what you decide. So there's more transparency now, uh, and uh, this is a change. Uh, this is it's changed the role. Well, I don't know if it's changed the role, but it's certainly affected the civil service, affected the bureaucracy. So sometimes the the all state measures of transparency also tend to be misused, and uh, and uh, well, this is again something one of these. Uh, <coughs> it's, it's, it's an example of change in the work environment. And uh, there's the overwhelming presence of the judiciary. You know, 
there is the, 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 the a lot of other activism that you see, green, uh, green uh, activism. You, you have a green tribunal now. So, all these factors have changed the way the bureaucracy has to, the civil service has to uh, function. Uh, but I think, actually I'm confident and I'm absolutely certain that the, the civil servants and civil service and bureaucracy has done well. It has adapted well to this change. It has even instigated change uh, in many instances. And so why on one hand the traditional roles will continue and the other, I think the, there is recognition in the uh, civil service. And I think this is a uh, point that I like to stress when I meet junior officers or meet uh, secretaries of government, I said that please don't ignore your leadership role. You might be civil servants, but you have a leadership role. And I think that is something that we need to stress. We also try to stress that there is need for uh, specialization. We have a lot of experts on, on every issue and we depend on them. But then we need to uh, you know, remember that actually we, it, it comes naturally because once you are confronted with issues which call for deeper study and better understanding of the complex issues involved, you do tend to specialize. What happens uh, when if you're discussing or you're negotiating uh, India's Food Security Act provisions uh, in the WTO, in the context of the Bali Ministerial meeting which is going to come, or, or in, in a dispute settlement mechanism in Geneva, you are, uh, you know, you are, you are you're dealing with a lot of, uh, you know, wealth of details rules, regulations, jargon, and you can't manage, you can't survive, you get exposed if you, and unless you have a mastery of that subject yourself, you tend to become an expert, of course you rely on experts. So this is a change, this is a change in role which you have to continue with that. But I think we cannot overplay the specialization bit. It's basically a grounding in with common sense, it's a, it's a, it's a, the common system supports the system. It's how you approach it. So the, the head of KM's gas in India, like a graduate in English from a college in Madras. If a new airline is coming up in India, who do they choose to head it? A 33 year old man who has no experience of the airline industry. All the top management in the airline will, by design, not have any experience in the airline industry. Why? Because you want fresh thinking, fresh blood, and you don't want people to bring the baggage of the, you know, their past experience or, 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 or the sector. Because you're living in an extremely competitive world, you know, you, you have to really be nimble and innovative in order to survive. So, I think we are conscious of that and uh, we need to be a little more eclectic in the way we, but this is the change. The role has changed, the thinking, and what we expect from civil servants has changed, and we cannot really, uh, I think, continue to be in the high power of traditional system. It served itself well in a particular time, really, but we have to respond to how, how the world is changing. I think civil service really also has to change. We need to train, and we are trying to do that, civil servants to invest more in thinking. I mean, here I'll make a difference because most of government is, is implementation. Any government. And a little bit at the top is involved in policy analysis, and policy advice. So, basically, you can say policy making, but ultimately, it's the policy masters who do that. So, there's one set of attributes and qualities and qualifications you require for those who are in the administration, in the, in the, the delivery of public services, the traditional role of civil service. There is another that I would be more concerned about policy issues. And this transition, this leap, 
this graduation, this maturing from one phase to the other, as I think we nurtured through our uh, HR policies, through our postings, through our, I'm not sure we succeed. We do try. We do want to succeed. I do <coughs> manage to always give the people I want into the places I want them to go, but uh, not for want of trying. So, the, 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 uh, Mr. 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 He, he spoke about some of the failings of you know, the system, the failings of the civil service of bureaucracy. Of course, there are failings. Failings are amazing indeed. And it's a learning process. But I think it is very important that the, and, and, and Sanjay is here, he's the secretary of the, uh, the Civil Service Association, and the all the, 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 he very rightly gets, he gets colleagues as, as an association, they get agitated over issues which will devil the uh, civil service, the development conditions, the uh, terms of contract, and how they are, uh, you know, uh, how the system uh, treats them. But at the same time, I think it is important that we don't lose our idealism. <coughs> We've we got to get our idealism back. We need hard to fight uh, any possibility of citizenship, uh, notwithstanding whatever uh, you know, uh, problems that uh, keep arising from time to time. Now, one, uh, and we have to grow. Uh, how do we grow? I mean, this is again a changing growth. I mean, one of the things that we have to grow is that, and something which I feel is missing at the moment, or at least not, not adequate <laughs> is the need for strategic thinking. Because uh, the world has changed, times have changed. Uh, at least when you reach the level of the Joint Secretary, uh, I mean, it's not just necessary to think through the problems that are posed to you by the political uh, system or uh, you know, the reactive events, but you need to think three steps ahead. Because the others are doing it many. So, we get left behind if we don't do it. And uh, decision making is slower in some countries, faster in others. So factor that in. And, uh, and, and, and this is again something that, that, that we, 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 we don't have a system of studying the future. So in, in the United States, we have like, there, there is a service colleague uh, who's, uh, who was succeeded Mr. Rahul uh, uh, and, and I asked, I, I met her husband and I asked her, what, what do you do? He says, I'm in the United States, I'm a futurist. So I said, he says, I predict the future for the living. Now he's not an astrologer. He, he works, I mean, he might work with British Aerospace, or he might work with, you know, with, with, with any, he might work with a kind of pharmaceutical company. And he will say, uh, you know, this is the requirement of the future. Start working on it now. The results will come 10, 15, 20 years from now. They may not come. But it's worth investing in that. But we need some sort of strategic thinking, uh, a mindset for strategic thinking in the government. And I think that is, again, a changing role which we have to <coughs> inculcate if, if it's not there. So, uh, so all this uh, has to come from bounds. Pejorative word, which is used by the media. So the, the humble Babu is expected to do all that. And uh, anyway, you can call the regrets what you like. They mean what they are. So, uh, so these are just, uh, you know, random uh, observations uh, on the changing role of the civil so sense. I've, I've not touched upon the, uh, you know, the changes in the external environment and, in terms of the, you know, the political or social processes, because they have been adequately referred to by my two distinguished uh, speakers on this call before me. But if I can, if I can sort of, uh, you know, conclude by, uh, you know, referring to two or three, uh, so reiterating two or three points, which I think, one is the role of technology. We, it's, it's very, you know. The, Apart from the changing role of civil service, there's a changing pace of civil service. I, I had the opportunity to address the last batch of uh, the probationers from Masuri. And, uh, and I just asked them, I said, the batch, how many of you are engineers? And they said, uh, 51 or something. And there were 18 MBBS doctors. Now, uh, there was a time when, uh, you know, 
people came from the traditional uh, backgrounds of uh, you know, English and political science and some other languages and so, uh, only the pure sciences. But this is the new civil servant for you. He comes wearing uh, you know Nike or Reebok sneakers. I didn't like it when I saw it for the first time. Uh, when I even some years ago, I, uh, it says he was wearing jeans and uh, you know, sports shoes, which is done the district manager. So you know, I think I thought <laughs> the district manager. Is, that's not my image of the district manager. But I think I've changed because I feel like a funny daddy myself now. You know, so I, you know, you have changed because they now. Uh, with their thumbs, they, they, they get you the information you want on their smartphones, and they, but it's a good thing. I, I rely on them now. And uh, so, so I think uh, they have changed faster and better. We, uh, the older generation, have got to change. The other is process reagenerating. Uh, the, the easy way out in uh, any government or in any system, even a large private sector, is let things go as they are. And, uh, you know, the chances are that uh, things will work, you will make money, you will make profits. But uh, what is required is uh, disruptive thinking. Somebody to uh, you know, shake things up. And uh, But apart from you, don't shake things up. Bureaucracies by inclination and by the DNA are not happy with shaking things up. You know, but uh, certainly process reengineering should be done. That you relook at what you're doing, ask yourself certain basic questions. What business are we in? I mean, for any project, or any service delivery, and are we doing it right? What can be done to minimize, cut the number of steps down? It's very fashionable to talk a single window. It's become a trite expression. It doesn't mean anything to us. You've got to overuse. It's, it's earning a bad name. But, but something in the spirit of that, that you, you cut delays, cut processes, rework the whole thing and say, are we, are we doing? So, but, but this is that thinking which the civil servants can provide, again, changing role. I think increasingly, I refer to the need for, or the tendency or the requirement for uh, committee approach and system approach. I think there's increasing realization, increasing need for a collaborative system of, of getting people done. I have tried to do that in, uh, recently. You know, there's a lot of uh, concern that has been very really rightly expressed about uh, slow approvals being given to projects which are pending for a long time. The economy is passing through a difficult time, and there is need for quick, uh, expeditious implementation of projects so that uh, whether in the power sector or shipping or telecom or steel, cement, anything. The projects which are languishing, maybe for what environmental clearance or any other uh, regulatory hurdles, but they're stuck, and we want to um, make them unstuck. So for this, it was felt that there should be a committee uh, because at the bureaucratic level it was not moving. So they said should be a committee, but it, at the cabinet level also it won't move unless there's a committee dedicated to this, and so the cabinet committee and investment was there, and uh, it has yielded. I think promising results, uh, and uh, so far we have managed to clear a number of the committees managed to, you know, uh, clear the number of proposals which were getting delayed. Now, this is an example of, and, and this, this process is replicated down the line. That you know, you have a an additional secretary level officer who, I mean, they don't write letters; they just call the concerned officer, the joint secretary level, and they meet, and they meet. And they take a decision there and then. And the decision, before they disperse, the decision is put on the web. The minutes. The minutes are put on the web before the meeting disperses. So, this is an example of collaboration, a collaborative effort, which is here and now, which is taking place. There is, with the changing, not so much the face of civil service, but with the changing role of civil service, I think there is also a need for a change in the method of appraisal of civil service. And the way it is, it seems to look at it. I have I'm trying to, uh, again, uh, bring about a change in the way people are uh, civil servants and government uh, officers, at least civil servants, civil servants are uh, assessed, they're appraised. 
because uh, the system is not uh, perfect, it's not satisfactory, and there's more for change from the that. But lastly, I think some, uh, one point which I do wish to make is that the changing, in the changing role of the civil servant, I think one important role is the civil servant's role in nation building. Uh, this, I think, has come to the fore in uh, the last few years in particular. The federal structure has shown uh, the need for, I think, um, how should I put it? The need for strengthening the, 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 the system that we have. We are a great country. And we, we need to project ourselves as, you know, <coughs> to tie ourselves together. And sometimes when you have a situation where uh, different states have their own points of view, which, uh, you know, the, the India could do better with a certain commonality approach. Uh, it is the civil service, I think, which is best placed to bring about that binding, to act as a binder, to bring about a uniformity in approach, and to you know, smooth the creases, so to speak, uh, when the issue arrives. I will not elaborate more on that, but I think it's worth it. So I, uh, I I don't think I'll take much more of your time. I I don't intend to speak so much, uh, uh, but I uh, would like to be really grateful to Mr. Jyotiraj and I for giving me this opportunity to uh, to share some views, and I think it's been quite interesting. Also, clear. Thank you very much. Chairman, sir, respected dignitaries on the dais, respected seniors, and members of this society who are present here to deliberate on this important uh, subject, ladies and gentlemen, members, and friends from media. As a junior most, I am the last speaker. So the disadvantage for the last speaker is that many words of wisdom and wise words have been spoken before me. <laughs> but nonetheless, I will speak and uh, uh, Padma Shri Shashiji said that something should also be spoken in Hindi. So I will try to speak in Hindi also. I come from South India but worked in UP so I will try to speak in Hindi. I may make mistakes, so please apologize me. Okay. And I have a youngster from uh, who is also uh, uh, being given the responsibility to take care of the members of the service. So at times there may be outbursts, so please bear with me. Dil se bolunga, dimaag ka usko santulan mein rakhte. Friends, bureaucracy today is at crossroads and at real crossroads. I am at a very advantageous position because I have seen officers from 1954. Three of 
uh, the dignitary sitting were my bosses in one or the other way uh, in the UT garden. And many of them are there in the audience also. So if I say something, sir, which may not be very palatable, so please excuse me. The, I have the advantage of, and I had interacted, I was lucky because I was involved in the UPIS Association, which is one of the biggest cadre from 1995, five, six years after I joined the service, starting from the point which the voting took place, so in that till today. And I had interacted till the last batch of 2012. I'm lucky to go to the academy every year to deliver one or the other lecture on one or the other important subject, so I have interacted with a cross-section of, uh, and I know each and every IS officer in UP Carter from 1954 to 2012, and half of the IS officers across the country, and I keep listening to them, especially the youngsters. So being at the center of the seniors and the juniors, I get kicks from both the sides. So they say, Ki seniors say, you juniors, you don't nowadays respect us, and so on and so forth. You are not so honest, you blah, 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 blah. And youngsters also give me kicks, sir. Seniors are not protecting us, blah, 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 blah. So it's good, but I'm like a football, but I'm in trend. Friends, the role of civil services, as all my previous esteemed speakers have said, has gone tremendous change. Post independence till date. I think the first 20, 30 years, as I hear from my seniors, was reasonably okay if we went for a socialistic pattern of society, uh, economy, and uh, modern temples, BHL, bail, this, this, uh, very good things done by the public sector, and my seniors have done a great job in creating this, uh, this uh, country uh, known on the global platform. And then we started changing both in our thinking economies, on the economical front and on the governance front. It has now become very, very difficult. Rather, I came in 89. I tell people the day the, these two batches, 88 and 89, have come, they have changed the vastu of the service. We have the service vastu Because जो अच्छी कथाएं सुनने को मिलती थी सर्विस के बारे में कुछ देखने को नहीं मिला। From day one we have been uh, kicked like football and post 88, 89 officers are being transferred left, right, centre. You will be surprised to know that a collector of 1995 batch, if I say, he has done 20 collectorships. Sir would know that fourth collectorship when I joined the service means that this man is a great bureaucrat, he knows how to run the district. And there used to be bigger towns called Kawal Town, which means Kanpur, Varanasi. They would head that and then they will become commissioners. But today a youngster, three months in Baramaki, four months in Bairaj, three months in Bareli, four months in Merat, two months in Ghaziabad, he is doing 20 collectorship, 20th collectorship. Now, I don't think he has come for that. Definitely for that. And uh, the education is going to dogs of his children. Wife starts craving. Half of them have started going and staying with their parents. So lots of things are going on. Now coming on the professional side, what is happening? There is an increased role of judiciary, good, bad. I would not say because it has been spoken. Everything is being questioned, right or wrong. Not only that, there is an overbearing media. The moment you take a decision, it, the criticism is there uh, at the prime time news every day. So you are literally walking on a very thin razor edge. When I came, there was only one SCST commission, which was a joint commission. Now, I have an SC commission, an ST commission, a backward commission, a women's commission, later is a child's commission, uh, information commission, right? And plethora of commissions. But the 
some some have been spoken by my predecessors uh, on, on competition commission, this commission, that commission. Sir had very rightly said that joint secretary should do strategic thinking. Sir, I am a joint secretary. I cannot think, sir. Because I only answer, I am only reactive to all the commissions from morning till evening. So you will be surprised that joint secretary handle 150 files per day. Can I do any thinking for that matter? And tomorrow if you want, I can show you the record. Yesterday only I had taken a record. In, from 1st of July, 1st of January this year, till 23rd of October now. Yesterday, I had handled 13,000 files, sir. What, what time I am getting to do strategic thinking? Whereas I should do strategic thinking. So, so many things have come up. And I think rightly, I, I am a big supporter of RTI and it has given a great deal of strength to bureaucrats to tell the minister or politician who is doing bullying, look, if you want to take a decision, you take, I am not going to write. And it has helped the government to a great deal and we should strengthen RTI. But sir, when you are coming up with every day a new commission and every day a new, the government is coming, I mean the government is coming up new commissions, new paradigms of uh, uh, bureaucracy. Sir, will you please give me some support systems? Sir, my my department is, what, in 50, I had 100 technocrats. Today, sir, to handle I am, let me tell you, tell you, sir, in a simple way what I am handling, so that it makes easy to understand. My sir, Manushya, Matsya or Dhor, that is, power buffalo ko chhodke, I am handling all the animals. <laughs> all the animals, sir. But for, for these animals, I have only four technocrats. There were 100 technocrats 50, or 50 years back. Today, I am having four technocrats to handle, where food standard safety of authority has come up. Intellectual property has come up. So many authorities are coming up. So many laws are coming up. You don't give me the last one, sir. Sorry, RFD. Result framework. You, I don't get any staff. I mean, I'm not talking of myself. I'm talking to the bureaucracy, which is working day in and day out. Then you have CAT, you have SAT, you have all types of tribunals sitting on your. And everybody, every day, they are calling. There are three officers 